Hi, everyone. Well, welcome. My name is Fausto Puglisi, uh, president and founder of Cybertrain University, and welcome to the December 2018 Cyber Expo. So um, hopefully everybody's been enjoying today's uh, what's been happening in the market and everything. And uh, we're always glad to have you guys here. And we always like to host these events regarding about our cyber expos because, listen, there's no better way of learning how to trade in the market than obviously being in events like this, you're, you know, being in and learning from great traders. So you have, you have uh, decades of education to, of, of presenters that are going to be speaking. Uh, we got Melissa Arano and we have Jeff Hirsch, uh, all very well-known people in today's industry. And uh, we're going to start off and uh, introducing Melissa, who's going to basically talk to you right now. And she'll be our first presenter here. And let me just tell you a little bit about Melissa. Melissa has been basically uh, just like me, started her own um, her own educational company, where she teaches people how to successfully trade in the stock market. She owns the company Stock Swish, and uh, you know it's very well known, been around for a long, long time. Strategies called for uh, golden gaps, pinpoints, you know everything you need to know about how to trade today's volatile markets. Uh, one thing she's very well known. You've probably seen her a few times, but she's been also appeared on the stock market. She runs her own TV show, uh, basically make a million with Melissa. She's also been featured on uh, world television stage on Fox News, Fox Business Networks, RT America, Chatter TV, and uh, BC News Corporation. So she's been very well known and very recognized in the industry, and we're just glad to have her here. So, with that said, let me uh, pass over the microphone to her, and she's going to talk a little bit about. Uh, about today's markets, and then she's going to give you guys a little offer, and then Jeff will come after him. Uh, come up, sorry, after her at um, at twelve, and I'll be coming and joining and talking about today's volatile markets at one. So, guys, sit back and enjoy the presentation, and uh, whatever you, you miss, this will be recorded. So, for your listening pleasure. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask uh, when time is needed. So, Melissa, the stage is all yours. Welcome aboard. Terrific. Thank you so much for the nice introduction. Welcome, everyone. I hope everyone's having a good day. We will look at the play of the day for my trading room in a little bit here. We did Stitch Fix, and I saw just now recently it's still dropping. We did a quick play this morning. Stitch Fix, Stitch Fix was a short SFIX, if you want to look at it. For those of you that have never heard of me, uh, my name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh, and I focus on stocks that are gapping. But today we're going to talk about how you can focus on really one directional bias daily. And for me, it's shorts. So when you get really, really good at one direction, whether it's long or short, then the irony is that you get really good at the other direction. And the reason is because if you get really good at spotting weakness, which for example is what I did today in the Stitch Fix, then you're gonna more easily see strength, okay? Then you're gonna be able to see really what strength looks like in the market and how do you make money as a day trader you want to get in and out in moves and quick moves sometimes sometimes the moves last all day like six fix could go all day but the ideally i look to trade in the morning between 9 30 and 10 a.m eastern time this is me and uh i do appear on fox news and fox business often so if you've ever catch me i talk about the market i my market calls on national tv have all been accurate so we're going to talk a little bit about the market as well. I believe the market holds the uptrend for 2018 and 2019. However, we may not be done selling off. So the volatility is here to stay. And I think that that is something that traders are just going to have to get used to. It's not bad if you know how to trade the right direction, which is what we're going to talk about today. But it is bad if you're used to doing a set thing. It may not work in 2019. And probably a lot of people have been getting chopped up buying support, for example, in the last month in the market because the market has faked like it's holding support and then broken and sold off again. If you'd like more information, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com or call me at 929-3200-GAP. And you can also follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. And I do post my uh, television clips on YouTube as well. So talking about volatility, again, it can be lucrative, but uh, you have to know how to trade it. If you're scared of volatility, then 2019 is probably going to be a rough year for you. You might have had a rough uh, 2018. But if you want to make a lot of money, then volatility is a good thing. You have to be accurate. I actually think that you always have to be accurate as far as trading goes, which is why I try to focus on one trade a day and one ticker symbol a day. But, you know, if you want to do well in these volatile market times, accuracy is going to be key. And again, it comes down to the focus. 
how do you make a lot of money in the market? It's not about doing 25 trades a day. And it's not about trading all day from 930 to 4, okay? It's about finding one thing, honing in on it, and then plopping it on and doing it with size or holding it a little bit longer to a bigger target. That's how you do it. And I'm just seeing here, I'm not sure how to see the chats. Let me just look at it. Cause I, all right, there. There I see the I see the chat. Sorry. I don't know if anybody asked any questions before that. Someone just said no sound. Can everybody hear me? Okay, good. Um, anyways, getting back to what I was saying, day trading is something where you're in and you're out. So guess what? The volatility doesn't bother me because I'm not holding overnight. Now, what if you're used to doing swing trades or if you're a long-term investor? Well, the good news is if you're a long-term investor, I believe the market holds the uptrend, but you may get upset when you look at your account if you look at it every day, seeing the swings in the market. If you're a swing trader, you've definitely had a difficult time in the last few weeks, really since early October, because as I said earlier, the market has faked higher, faked lower, and did all kinds of crazy things. And if you don't know how to take the positions correctly and get in and get out with money as a swing trader, it's gonna be a hard year in 2019. So day trading, I think, is really gonna to come to the forefront again in 2019 as a way to make money in the market for an active trader, because it's gonna be easier to see these moves, to like stitch fix today, to get in and out, in and out. And that's really what it is. It's chunking out money in the market if you want to day trade actively. It's not about buying it and holding it or shorting something and holding it. And unless you want to be in as a long-term investor, and in that case, there will be some stocks, there will be some companies that are going to break trend in 2019 with the volatility. Not all, but some. And some you might not expect, okay? And I don't want to get too off topic here, but uh, Facebook is one of those ones I said early in the 2018 year in February. So Facebook, I kind of put in a separate bucket from the tech sector. It, say Facebook is in a downtrend. And so we'll see what happens. That could turn around in 2019. But as of right now, Facebook is in a different bucket than Amazon, Apple. Those stocks are still holding the uptrends, even with the selling. Facebook has not. And I don't know if that stock recovers. And guess what? If it does, it would do it in a gap. We're going to talk here about what a gap is in a minute, because like I said, that's what I focus on. So here's the overall market. Now I clipped this from yesterday. A uh, nice bounce yesterday. We gapped up this morning. I'm going to go over this here about volatility. What do I mean by volatility? Volatility, and everyone's been talking about it everywhere in TV, and it's going to continue. Volatility is not just the market falling, then rallying. This is the chart of the SPY. Then falling, then rallying, then falling, then rallying, faking like it's going to hold, then gapping down again, then rallying, gapping up big on after the summit. Falling off a cliff and then rallying again because we gapped up today. Volatility is not just that. True, true volatility. And again, 2019 is going to be like a lion in volatility compared to 2018. If you thought 2018 was volatile, this is going to look like a baby lamb compared to 2019. Because you're going to see way more of this. And what do I mean? I mean what transpired just in the last week. I'm just going to go back to the last three days. Here... This day here, the market closed, then it gapped down. And I know this is small, but you can still see it. For those of you that don't know what a gap is, a gap is the difference between the close and the open. So the market closed here and then it opened lower, then it fell. So then we had selling and then everyone's like, oh my gosh, we gapped down, we're falling, we're gonna sell off, we're gonna fall off a clip. Then buying came in, scooped the market up. Big buying came in, market closed near the highs. So then volatility is we, look lower, then we reversed on the same day. And then the next day we did it too. We gapped down slightly, then we rallied, we green, that's the tail, then we fell big time. Then the next day we fell again, this is yesterday, fell big time, then we got bought and we rallied all the way through and closed strong. And then we gapped up today. So volatility is not just normal down and then breaking or flipping around. Volatility is like on the actual day, on the actual day, you got to read the directional bias right. And you got to not only take the train, whether you're long or short, you got to get out when you're up. Because there were people that were short the market yesterday. If they didn't get out, then they were down. They were up, then they were down. And that was true in the last week. So look for more of this in 2019. Way, way more. But the benefit is if you know what to do and you know how to trade like I do, then guess what? 
you are going to be able to make a lot of money. If you don't, you're going to get chopped up. Okay. So day trading is a great job. Why? Because you, you can work from home. You don't have to live in New York. I do happen to live in New York, but you don't have to go down to Wall Street. I don't live on Wall Street. I don't, I've gone down there for different television spots. Uh, the funny thing is, it's very, very small down there. <laughs> have you ever gone down there? It's tiny. Looks a lot bigger on TV. But you don't have to live in New York. You'd be anywhere in the world and day trade. So it's a nice job. And it also, what I do is only in the morning. Although there's times when the whole trades longer. I do focus on the morning period. And I find that you get big moves in the morning. I'd say 80% of the moves of most stocks happen in the morning. Stitch Fix, again, is a good example. If I go back and look at this, that at 401 today, I bet that 80% of the move Wherever it closed, wherever the low ends up being, it will have happened within the first hour of the day in that stock. So it's just one of these things where you, if you focus on that time period that has the most momentum, whether you want to go short or long, you will have big moves. And so I do think that that is also part of the focus too, not just the directional bias, but the time frame, the time frame of when you want to get in and when you want to get out. Okay. So my strategy focus on is 9.30 and 10. If I'm not in something by 10, I'm probably not doing anything that day. And again, day trading is fast trades. Trades could be two minutes. Trades could be one minute. Trades could be 30 minutes. But that still to me is fast. These are not overnights or swing trades. All right. And again, this is a career if you want to do it from home. And I always tell people, take your time, ease yourself into it, learn how to trade, do a class like mine, and then tiptoe in, start with small lots, then raise it up. Prove to yourself that you can do it, that you could be green until you quit your job, whatever you're having to do right now, if you really want to become a professional trader. Take your time doing it. There's no rush. The market isn't going anywhere. Although I will say that I do think 2019 will be a very, very profitable year to actively day trade. And so it is all about the focus. Now, why do I like to focus on shorts? I like to focus on shorts because people, when they get crazy and upset and panic, sell. And selling action happens very quickly. So again, I like the fast trades. So you could have a move of a dollar or more that could happen lickety split in seconds or minutes. And if you capture that move, you could make money. It's just common sense. So when people are down in positions, they will sell and they won't think twice about selling and they'll sell really quickly and maybe they'll sell and they shouldn't sell, but they'll sell anyways, okay? So that's what creates the selling action, the red that you see in my charts that I'm gonna show you in a minute. That movement down as a day trader, you're going to short. So you're going to short selling action in stocks. And that is what I teach people how to do. But you don't really need a general overall broad base of the market or any specific thing to even understanding fundamentals, okay, to make money as a trader. In fact, I would never even have time to read what the earnings report said about Stitch Fix if I wanted to trade. I wouldn't even have time to do it, and it wouldn't even matter. Reading price, reading the price patterns is what counts. So if you learn how to read institutional money, and I'm gonna talk about this more in a minute, and price patterns and gaps, you really don't need to do anything else. Institutional money is what moves the market, and it's what moves stocks, okay? And so if you get on with those moves and institutions, institutional money, what do I mean by that? I mean big funds, hedge funds, big banks, huge traders taking lots and lots of size, not just a little bit, a lot, okay? And if you get on with those people's moves when they're buying or selling, you can make money and you can make money quickly and easily in the market, but you gotta pick those right. And so I learned and taught myself 10 years ago when I started trading to do something called price forecasting. That's really what it is. It's technical analysis, but it's advanced technical analysis because I'm looking at the gap. Many people do not understand gaps. They think gaps fill themselves, even though that may work once in a blue moon. You're not trading an institutional move when you're doing that. It does not work consistently. And if you want to make money, and particularly if you want to do this for a living, you have to be consistent. What does consistent mean? It means you got to win in more trades than you would ever, ever lose. You have to have a high win ratio. If you don't have a high win ratio when you're trading, then you're never going to make it. So it's not just about having this one John Mungo trade, even though that's very nice and every once in a while it happens. It's about hitting it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and having lots of wins. It doesn't mean that every trade works. There are some trades I take that lose, but not that often. So it's the idea that you win more than you lose. So you have to look at it and say, I have 100% conviction the stock is going lower or it's going higher. And I have a method that I determine that before the open. So I'm not trading on the fly after the open. I liked Stitch Fix 
actually last night, but I rated it this morning using my system about 7 a.m. Okay, so I knew last night, two and a half hours before the open today, that I was going to short Stitch Fix. Now, I didn't get in. I didn't get in until after the open, but I knew that I liked it. So let's talk about price forecasting, because that's what I did this morning. This is what I do every day. Forecasting is used of historic data to determine the direction of future trends. And I look at a daily chart. Business utilize forecasting to determine how to allocate their budgets or plan for anticipated expenses for an upcoming period of time. And this is typically based on the projected demands for the goods and services they offer. So when you decide to become a day trader, it's like you're running your own little business. It's you. You have your own business. You're sitting at your desk. You have your trading account. You have your charts. You determine how much money you're risking per trade, just like you were planning out your expenses if you own your own business. You're working for yourself. You're the boss. You're the worker bee. You are in charge of yourself and you have to be responsible, okay? So you're saying, I want to spend the money on my business on this stock or this trade. And I think that this is worth spending $500 risk or $1,000 risk or whatever you want to risk. Just like if you had your own business and you were working for yourself because that's really what you're doing. And that, again, is the benefit of trading. It's just a lot of people are not responsible for themselves. But if you want to do this, know that you do have to be responsible for your choices and trades. Okay. Um, let me just see here. Any questions? No, I don't think so. Okay. A couple of people said no sound. Can everybody hear me? Am I talking to myself? <laughs> I hope I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> Eric may be the only one listening. Um, okay, good. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying here about price forecasting. <laughs> this was SFIX today. I know this is already broken lower since I clipped this at 10.52. It dropped some more. But let's get back to what I was talking about earlier about gaps, okay? So this close is a daily chart. So daily chart is Stitch Fix. Stock closed here last night, whatever the number was. I don't know, 25 something. Open, boom, down here this morning, right under the cusp, basically right under 21-ish. I don't know the exact price, but right there. So the stock closed here, gap down. So a gap is a difference between the close and the open. Stocks can gap up, stocks can gap down, okay? But this closed here and then it gapped down and it was a short. So I did my own little price forecasting and I determined the directional bias of Stitch Fix today would be lower. So I said, this is going to go lower. And if you know a stock's going to go lower, guess what? As a trader, you can short it. If you know something's going to go higher, then you can go long it. But the idea is to get in before the move happens. Otherwise, you're chasing it. Now, let's just look at what a gap up is. Again, we're not talking about that today, but I just want to show you. This is all the way back here at the beginning of October, middle of October. Stock closed here, gap up closed here this is four o'clock eastern time boom open in the morning right here at 9 30. had a little rally you could have bought that there i wouldn't have done it but it, it had a little tiny move up so anyways this is a gap up and this is a gap down so in the morning or at night whenever the stocks cap sometimes things gap in the, at night sometimes things gap in the morning i rate them and i rate them using my system that i developed and if you wanted to come and learn my method that's what you would learn from me it's a 26 point rating system. I will tell you AEO is another ticker symbol I'll be watching tonight. It has earnings. I don't know what it's going to do. I don't know if it's going to gap up. I don't know if it's going to gap down. I don't even know if it's going to rate well per my system to even trade it at all. But I know that I will watch it. Now, you get gaps for many reasons. News, a lot of things gap with the market. Somebody gets fired that's a CEO, okay, or earnings. Many, many reasons. Okay, downgrades, upgrades, lots of reasons for gaps occur. But that's neither here nor there because, like I said, I don't look at fundamentals. Now, although people like to do that, I said, listen, if you like to do that, fine. But don't ignore the price and trade based on fundamentals because you're going to have a hard time doing that as a day trader and particularly in these volatile times. One great example of that is a favorite stock that everybody loves. It's Apple. Apple's been breaking and breaking and breaking. Everybody loves a company. Apple's not going bankrupt anytime soon. But if you've been going long on that stock for the last couple of weeks, you've been down money or you are down money if you're still in that position as long, depending on where you bought it. So again, when you want to make money as a trader, you're looking at the price action and you've got to forecast where is it going to go next. And then you take it and you're up and you're out and you take it and you're up and you're out. Okay. Again, this is not long-term investing. 
Um, let me just see here. For the shorts, you have to be three upticks though. If you are, if you are, RK is asking about upticks. When you short a stock, and this is just, I mean, this is just a very basic question. You have to have the stock available to short with your broker. It's called a, a pre-borrow. And I don't want to get too off topic here, but you can ask your broker about this. But many stocks that we trade are down, and they could be down more than 10%. In the case of Stitch Fix, it was down more than 10%. But it doesn't mean that you can't get in the train, okay? The, every time you have a move down like this, you can place an order or you can take it with a honky using whatever uh, ECN that you determine is good for you to take it to get filled. But you have moves, and I, didn't, I don't know if I put the one minute. No, I didn't. I didn't put the one minute in this, but you can go look at it, or we'll look at another chart I have in here uh, that we've done before. You get pushbacks and things, little green bars. So you're going to get filled. If you leave, if you press the button to get filled and you don't get filled right away, leave it sit there, you're going to get filled. Okay. But long and short of it is that 10% down or more, sometimes it can be that it's difficult to get filled. Sometimes it's not difficult to get filled. Sometimes if you use the right ECN or if you have the right broker, you're going to get filled. you got to have the stock to short. So you definitely have to trade at a broker that has a lot of shorts, okay? But anytime something is down 10% or more, you do have to be aware of the fact that you may have to force yourself in, okay? What does that mean? It means pressing it, pressing it, pressing it, or letting the order sit. It's going to fill you, okay? But we don't have any problems getting filled in these. You do have to have a broker, though, that allows you to short Stitch Fix. And if you don't, then what I'm saying is that you have to find another broker because there's a bazillion brokers out there, prop trading places, retail brokers, and many, many of them have uh, lots and lots of shorts. And if you check it in the morning, which you need to do, and you don't have it, then you call the broker and say, I would like 5,000 shares of Stitch Fix today or whatever, and you request it. And then they usually get back to you by 9 a.m. or 9.15 and tell you if they can get it or how many shares they can get, whatever you want. And sometimes you do have to pay a small fee for that. Sometimes you don't. Again, this is all, these are all questions that you ask your broker. But in general, we do not have a problem getting filled. Every once in a while, maybe once a year, I have a problem getting filled in something or I have a problem where I can't get the short, but it's so rare that it doesn't even matter, okay? And we are trading on the one minute chart, which I'm gonna show you in a little bit here. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, you, when you're looking for something or looking for institutional footprints that are coming in, that are gonna take control, and one of the things that's been so erratic about the market is that it's been very difficult for people to, to tell whether or not the bulls are coming in or the bears are forcing the market down, okay? So like there was, this is gosh, I think two weeks ago now, uh, there was news that came out, you know, uh, the Fed made a statement and the market had this giant mungo move up on the day, like out of nowhere, but then it didn't go anywhere. It didn't go anywhere at all. And then people get upset. They said, well, well, I thought that everybody was in, that this is, we turned around, that we were long again, and then we fell again. So, you know, when you're looking at this, you have to focus on the gaps, you have to focus on the gap rating, and you have to focus on institutions. And I will tell you right now that it has been tricky reading the market. A lot of people have got it wrong, and I believe a lot of people are going to continue to get it wrong. And I'll say this really quickly, I don't want to get too off topic here, but if you are doing something like futures traders, man, you better know how to read the market in 2019. And a lot of things people are doing aren't going to work. Now, I don't trade futures, but I'm telling you, the market is going to fake higher, fake lower, fake, 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 fake. What you've seen in the last couple of days is going to be way worse next year. And it's going to be the norm. Like, this is it. Like, we've started. Like, welcome to 2019, the way the market's acted. You have to be able to read truly the institutional footprints. And it isn't necessarily a big green bar or a big red bar, if that makes any sense. Okay. What gap up are you talking about? The only chart I've shown so far was I talked about stitch fix and I had the market back here. That's all I've talked about so far with charts. Okay, let me get into this here. So let's talk more about gaps. Okay. So again, this was last week. It was Friday. This was big. Okay. Big gap down. A big gap down, big actually. Stock closed here the night before Thursday night, boom. Gap down in the morning, right around 32. Big was a short. So 
I forecasted using my rating system that this was a short, but guess what? Some traders went long it, but the play was to the downside. Now, here was the play. This is the one minute chart. Stock close tier gap down, open, one, two, three, boom. We shorted it here with the stop up here, dropped. So this pushed back. We held in the trade, the stop held, broke, fell, really nice trade. This is, this is expert like Melissa all over it here because a lot of traders thought this would fill the gap. It was a big gap down. The stock could lift over the high. It did it more than once. People bought it in here that were traders. I was shorted, 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 got the drop, I made money. This was a short. Now, you would have had to, again, know my rating system to be able to predict this was lower because it looked like it was gonna move higher because it did move higher initially. But we were in it short. And I was very aggressive in this, but it was a good guy. So we traded the one minute chart, but I forecasted this before the open, before the open. I don't wait and say, well, maybe I'm gonna go long this. Maybe I'm gonna short this. No, 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 no. You can't have 100% conviction something's a long and a short at the same time. That's no conviction. You either have 100% conviction that big is a short and the price is dropping lower or you have 100% conviction the stock is gonna move higher which I did not, I had conviction it was lower, but it's either one or the other. And I don't play the same stock in both directional biases in any given day, because again, that's no conviction, zero conviction. And if you wanna make money in the market, you have to have this in 2019. And if you don't know, you don't have it, it's probably because you don't have a full understanding of rationale of why to have conviction that big is lower which is what I teach in my class. But either way, you need to have an understanding and say, oh, I get it. I see what she's talking about here now. And it's the same thing with the market, okay? It's hard to explain this on TV. Sometimes I try in layman's terms, but I'm not in front of a chart and television. It's a lot easier in the trading room, you know, when I'm, when I'm pointing at a, chart, at a chart. But the market here is one of these things where, again, a lot of people's perception of the market is that we are gonna continue lower. A lot, we're, we may drop some more. And then people's perceptions of the overall market are gonna be that we're bearish, even though to me, technically speaking, we're not gonna go bearish, barring a world war, which you know I hope that doesn't happen, but I always preface it in saying that. But I'm telling you, people are going to start to be bears, even the talk all over the place. I mean, I've, I've already getting emails from it of different educational places and people have been discussing on TV since October, but I am still bullish on the long-term market. It doesn't mean you can't short the market on a gap down on the day that it falls, but you don't want to be overnight the market to the downside. And to, to be honest with you right now, I really wouldn't be overnight the market long in any direction for long at all. I mean, take it one day, get out the next day. It's quite a different story. I called the market right into the close on the Friday before the summit and it gapped up big and I said to people, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out into the open. This was an immediate profitable trade. You took it Friday night, get out of it Monday, but the market then fell. So again, you could do a quickie, but I wouldn't be in anything long. Now, again, if you're in long-term investments, then you gotta stay the course. Unless you're in your current retirement, then you gotta sit down with your financial advisor and determine what you're doing with stuff. Because I mean, it's gonna be a rocky 12 months for the market here. Um, I don't know if anybody else had any other questions. Do you suggest getting in the pre-market with anticipation? Absolutely not. No way, no how. And sometimes I'll watch something fall off a planet in the pre-market, even though I know I like it. Between seven and nine or six and nine, or sometimes I see things when I get up if I'm on TV at 4 a.m. I don't get in them. No, you've got to wait. You have to wait. You, 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 it's not gonna benefit you to get in because you're never gonna be able to take 5,000 shares of something and make it work in that type of a, a morning trading. It's way too volatile. Things can move against you. You don't have the volume. I mean, I could list a hundred reasons why I don't do it, but don't do it. Um, what else? Richard said, wow. I don't know what he's wowing about. Santa Claus rally this year. I don't want to get too crazy off track with that. I'm sure I'll be talking about it 100,000 times on TV between now and the end of the year. But I did say that I wasn't sure if we'd make new highs before the end of the year. The week of Black Friday, it was on Fox Business. Then at this point here, I knew that we would not. And then I said, nope, we're not going to do it. 
We're not going to actually, I knew it here Monday because we didn't follow through. And I said, no, we're not going to make new highs this year. And then I did review that on television on Charles Payne's show. I said, no, we're not going to make new highs this year, but I do believe we do in 2019. Are we going to have a Christmas rally? Black Friday. I said, yes, I think we have a Christmas rally. You can call a New Year's Eve rally if you want. At the tail end of, here's my call. Here, you want it? You write it down. The tail end of 2018, we're going to, we're going to rally. The tail end of the year. What do I mean by that? I, don't, I can't tell you the exact time and second and date. It could be the very last day of the year. <laughs> Literally. It could be the last two days of the year. It could be the week of Christmas. It could be the week between Christmas and New Year. I don't really want to call it a Christmas rally. I'm going to call it a New Year's Eve rally. I'm saying at the very tail end of 2018, we're going to have a rally, but we aren't going to go over the high. But it doesn't matter. We're still strong. It's the tail end of the year. That's all that I, I saw. I saw it here. I saw I saw it here in this, whatever this was here. I said, oops. Nope. Anyways, here was the results. I just, I didn't want to put the whole year in here, but there's the results. Just so you can see here, we did this stitch fix back on this day, two months ago, whenever it was. Okay, I forget the reason for that gap, but that one worked good too. So you see here, I try to focus on one ticker symbol a day. And like, if I do one trade and get a stop, like here, then I'll do, I'll do another trade. Okay, and then there were days where there were no good gaps. So we didn't do anything at all. Okay, and then, you know, you just have to kind of look at something and say, Am I prepared to do two trades today? I rarely, rarely, rarely do more than two things. But every once in a while, I might do two things. And sometimes I do what's called a retake. Now, Big might have needed that. I would have gone back after Big if we had gotten stopped, but we didn't get stopped. But anyways, MM worked, but it required a retake. ACAM here worked, required a retake. But you should give yourself at least a couple of trades in the morning. But if I do one thing, whatever it is, and I'm in and I'm out, boom, I'm done. Like whatever it is, it is, okay? I'm, I figure my job for the day is to make money. And once that goal is accomplished, I am done. And that's how I look at it. And really, I could have made a lot more here in the big. I didn't even hold this. I didn't even hold it at all. But it was getting into reversal time. It went to the first target, out, okay? So, I mean, you really have to have a set plan of action with what you are doing. But all in all, it, these are just the results in earnings season. I'm pointing out October and November because it was earnings season. So you get a lot of gaps in earnings season. Right now, we're playing what we get. Yesterday, we didn't do anything. Today was stitch fix. Tomorrow, I don't know what we're going to do. You, you play the important times. You play the good ones. You play it hard when you get the good ones, too. And you don't do any trades when there's nothing good to do. You don't force it. And you're never going to be able to make a stock move anyways. And if everyone in every trading room everywhere in the world shorted a stock, it wouldn't move it. You only get moves like stitch fix or big or, or even the moves in the market with big money. So, and, and that isn't a thousand traders even in a room or whatever people have. It's just, it's just, or a couple hundred. It's, it's about, I mean, I'm talking about serious, serious money that comes in and moves these stocks. And it happens in the pre-market and it happens on the live day and it happens in the post-market. That gap up big that happened in the market from that Friday. And then the, then the news came out after the summit on the Monday morning. Big gap up in the market. Big gap up in the market. That wasn't a couple of traders. That was real money. Okay. So what experience do you need and how long does it take? People always ask me this. You can come and learn how to trade with me and with no experience at all. In fact, one of the ladies in the room that's doing the best, uh, she made $1,000 a day in Stitch Fix, is brand new to the class a couple months ago. She just listens to every single thing I say. She takes the trade, she gets out, she puts the stop in, she just does it, doop a doop a doop like a robot. She's new and she listens to me and she's doing great. So the best thing I can say to people is you don't have to have an experience to come to me, but you do need to listen to what I do. If you wanna follow me, you need to do it. Don't make up your own rules. And the problem is a lot of people have to unlearn things that are previous traders in the past and they have to unlearn like things that they have been taught that don't work, like gap fills and stuff like that. Um, Richard said, I'd like to learn more the way I'm trading, then email me at Melissa at thestockswoosh.com. You can do a trial this week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, if you want, you can email me. Anyways, a short time of the day. You got to be available to be at your computer between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time. So I have people as far away as Australia. It's a different, complete different time zone. But in that 30 minutes, you got to be there and you got to be in the room. So my system is, I'm looking at 26 points. It measures the gap by rating them on the daily chart. Define stocks to trade that have one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day. Two, big move in the day. 
Three, early confirmation of the bias on the move between 9.30 and 10. And four, precise entries with follow through and a good risk to reward target potential. So again, whether I hold it to the bigger target or not is up to me because if my goal's in for the day, and, and a lot of times if I'm on TV in the afternoon now, not today, but if I am, then I'm not gonna get going. So I can't hold something to four o'clock anyways. I like doing other things with my life and I don't wanna be chained to a computer. A TV's fun for me. And, and, and now I have this whole nother career. So, I mean, for you yourself, if you want to sit in front of a computer all day, stitch fix may close near the lows. But personally, myself, I look at it like I get up and I do it and I'm done. I get up and I do it and I'm done. And in the past, when I have traded, I mean, this is like 10 years ago when I started out, what I realized very early is that you tend to get picky about it. And if you make money in the morning and then keep trading, you tend to give the money back. So I just don't think it ever benefits anyone by sitting there all day, your eyes get tired, then you start to get piggy in your mind with the money. Just look at it like you're going in and you're taking it and you're getting it out. And then every once in a while, you are gonna have a big trade. Every once in a while you're gonna, and we're gonna go over the, the, one of those big trades here, which was ACAM in a second. But how much you risk is really a function of what you can afford based on the size of your account. Now, if you have a prop account, you usually get 10 to one leverage. If you have a, a retail account, you get four to one leverage, but these are not cash positions. Just so you know, day trading, everyone trades with margin. Um, you're in and out and you're flat before four o'clock Eastern time, okay? Yes, yeah, sometimes I do shopping or get my hair done. Um, I don't trade after hours. I just don't trade after hours and I don't trade in the morning. I just don't do it. I just, there's no point in doing that. Um, anyways, here, let's go over AMAT. So this was one back again, December, stock closed here, gap down, boom, fell. So this is a baby gap down. So the stock closed here around 38.50 or whatever, opened here in the morning around 38, fell like a brick. Again, this went to the target, beautiful move. You didn't have to hold it all the way down. You could have got it early. You could have held it all the way down. Now I wanna show you here, this is a 15 minute chart. This is a 15 minute bar. Again, going back to what I said, as far as moves go, you could have played this here, boom, get in and out. The move up here, the high was 38, low down here was 37. So you could have got a buck out of the first 15 minutes of this and you just went on with your merry well of day. Now we didn't get this out of the gate. We did not do this in the first 15 minutes. So we did a late trade in this, but I just wanna show you, you could have, you could have done it and you could have done it and just been done. Anyways, it dropped, fell, broke here. This was a really good call. This is a late trade. Now, this was a good gap and also the market was with this thing. So the market was with this to do it late and it set up and it was a good gap. Okay, so I saw the selling was gonna come in and continue. So we shorted this here. We did an add in in here. Great, great entry and stop in this here. It was like 30 some cents and got the drop. So you, what you wanna do when you do these, again, you just wanna take it, get the move. You could have taken here and you got the move. Now this is again, is a 15 minute chart, but I did do this as a 15 minute play. Why? Because it's late. So this was a late train around 11 o'clock, 10.45, 11 o'clock on this day. This is for an advanced trader and I will go over the beginner trader in a minute. Entry 36.60, stop 36.90, 7,000 shares was the initial entry in this. Then there was an ad, 36.54, doubled the position once it broke, Price was 36.57, 14,000 shares. You can certainly take that in size of position in this. Again, I trade only stocks with volume. I'm never doing penny stocks. We're not doing crappy crack, we're just not. Anything that you would ever trade in my room, you've heard of, AEO, Stitch Fix, AMAT, Apple. You've heard of the companies, they're real, you know them. We're never doing penny stuff, stocks or anything like that. There's no institutions that are buying that crap. Anyways, exit was 35.30, good exit, even though it kept going, huge trade. Now, what was the reason this was such a big trade? 17,000, almost 18 grand, why? Great entry, small stop, 30 cents plus, doubled it and added to the position, huge size and a big move that just came in right at a perfect timing with the market, okay? Let me go back. Actually, let me go back and show you the market here, 12.4. Just get back here at the market. 12.4. I think it was here. Wasn't this this day? I think it was this today. I think it was this day. I think that was 12.4. I have to go back now and look at my, I think that was 12.4. It's so hard to see. Anyways, okay, let's go back to AMAT. Now, buying power needed to do this over 500,000. This is an advanced risk. You didn't have to take 14,000 shares, but I'm just showing you if you wanted to do this, what you would have done. 
This is an advanced trader position, okay? Cash needed to retail account, you would have needed only $128,000. That's really not that much considering the fact that you would have actually made $18,000. So that, you know, you say, well, that's a lot of money. Yeah, but you could have made 18 grand. When you look at that and you look at how much percentage you would have made on the cash that you had, that's really good in one trade in one day, and, and, you know, just in one move. Now, if you had a prop account, again, 10 to 1, you would have needed 51200 People always ask me about prop accounts. Shop around. There's plenty out there. If you cannot afford to open up a retail account where you actively day trade and you need 25000 then you need to go to a prop place. There are some good prop places. There are some bad prop places, just like there's some good retail places and there's some bad retail places. It's no difference, really. But you have to check out wherever you want to go trade. Now, if you were a beginner and you wanted to do this and you couldn't take that size or you didn't even want to take that size because you're new, you would go through it and you would say, okay, I'm going to risk $400 on every trade or $200 on every trade. And that's how you figure it out. And you set that all up in yourself before you even decide. When you get up in the morning and you rate the gap, and I fill out a worksheet for myself and I say, okay, I rate it and it rates whatever, 21 points, 22 points, whatever it rates. I say, okay, I'm going to risk this much on it, $1,500 or whatever I decide. And I write it down in the sheet and then you got to stick to it. And again, you have to be accountable to yourself. You work for yourself. You're the boss. So you're writing out your jobs for the day and you got to do the jobs, okay? You can't say, well, my job for the day is to make this much money and risk this much money and then all of a sudden, you know, not do it or change the plan. That's not a good idea. Now, if you're a beginner, same exact trade. There's no difference. I call the trades of the room. It's a 60 by 90. You take it, 700 shares is a lot different risk than 7,000, but still, guess what? Same trade. You could have made 1,700 bucks. You would have done the ad, 1,400 shares, and here you go. And again, you're getting the move. You're getting the move down. It's a, it's a short. Buying power needed, 51,000. Cash in a retail account, the minimum is 25,000, so that's what you would need to go anywhere that's retail. And in a prop account, you would have needed 5,120, Okay. Again, check into this, I'm not a broker, but I'm just letting people know that you can do various sizes of risk. Small, big, somewhere in the middle, okay? And I also want people to know that these are not cash accounts. You do not need a half a million dollars to have done that, that advanced trade, okay? Um, anyone that wants to learn more about what I do, email me at melissathestockswish.com. Yeah, this is a this is a this is this is an interesting style of trading. And to be honest with you, I really think that this is going to be something that people listen. I'm telling you, you do not want to be a buy and hold person in 2019. You are going to get killed. And if you lost money day trading or doing any trading in 2018, you are going to get killed in 2019. If you made money in 2018 trading, you might make money in 2019, or guess what? You might lose because 2019 is not going to be the same as things before. There's lots of reasons why. I don't want to get into a whole big thing about it, but I'm telling you right now, you got to know what you're doing to trade in the market and come 2019. Even if you thought you did, you may not make money next year. The way that people trade, the things that people have been doing, buying support and shorting resistance and these kinds of things and looking at higher highs and higher lows and lower highs and lower lows, or where I even put the stop, people are putting stops if they're doing trades. If the game is changing people. And I'm not saying it's gonna last forever, but I'm saying it's gonna to start to change. It already has started. It's gonna carry into 2019 and it may even last into 2020 because it's a presidential election. And the market may not situate itself until until 2020 or 2021, I don't know. For me, it's not a concern because volatility is good for someone like me. It's good, but I'm telling you, and I'm warning people, if you've kind of traded and, and you've just been like, well, I'm just gonna do a little bit here and a little bit there, you know, you may get hurt. So take it seriously, okay? 
One of the reasons why people find trading so hard is because they lack clarity. They do not have a strategy. They don't have conviction. They don't even know what that means. Conviction is important. It will be more important in 2019, as I said, but it's really about the knowledge. The knowledge, the system that I created, I've been doing for 10 years, and my trading has improved over time. It's one of the reasons I'm on Fox. When you get to the point where you really know how to do something, you're supposed to make more money over time. You're supposed to get better. The problem is that many, many traders never get to that point because they jump from thing to thing to thing to thing to thing. Do, but do, but do. And they never get good. And then they blame the market and they say, oh, this didn't work. And I hate the market. And I just, you know, and then they lose conviction even in the market. The market is a place that you can profit. The problem is that a lot of people do dumbass things and dumbass trades and sometimes make money. Then they think they know how to trade. But that doesn't mean they know how to trade. Sometimes dumb luck, you will make money to trade. When you take a wrong action and you have a positive outcome, that's very, very bad actually for you as a trader. Because in the long run, you're not serving yourself. You'll never then learn the right way to do it or realize that you need to know how to do it. So what happens is somebody may take 10 trades, lose in all of those 10, and take one that is a big winner, that's a wrong action, with a positive outcome, which is profit, and think they know how to trade. Even though if you look at all the trades, all 11 trades, the 10 losers and one winners, they think they know how to trade, but they don't. There's no consistency in something like that. It's about taking you know, 11 trades and making money in nine and losing in two. And then you can say, well, I clearly know what I'm doing here, or this system is working, or I, I, I see it coming together. I wanted to talk about 2019 here, I pretty much already did. Uh, but anyways, day trading is not investing. You're chunking it out. You're getting the fast moves. That's what you're looking at doing. And if you want to make a living doing this, a lot of people look at six figures a year. It could be 100 grand. It could be 200 grand. Whatever the set amount is, divvy it up. Like just, you know, some days you won't do any trades, but it's not the end of the world. It, it, it's not the end of the world at all because then the, the next day you might, you might have a really big trade. And what if you lose in one day? Again, the next day you may get a really good one. So you just have to look at it and say, okay, well, this is per week, per month, per year. And that's how you break it out. And it allows you then to not get overly excited or, or overly stressed out. If you just say, okay, well, I'm just going to look at the whole week. So my goal for the week is this. And sometimes you make your goal for the week in one trade. All right? If you can't buy 14,000 shares, guess what, Linda? You can buy 1,400, you can buy 400, you can buy what you can afford. That's why I did the beginner example. The beginner example was 700 shares short, then you added in a 1,400. You can do this with whatever you can afford. I'm showing you the different uh, types of traders. I've been doing this for 10 years. No one's saying you have to be me. You can short 100 share lots. And if the stock moves a dollar, that's a hundred bucks. If you make a hundred bucks every day, that's $500 by the end of the week. And guess what? That's two grand a month. Two times 12 is 24 grand a year. And I know a lot of people that would just love to make 24 extra, 24,000 extra dollars a year, especially only working for half an hour, an hour a day. And many traders that are trading are not making $24,000 a year. They are losing. So it's not about the fact that you have to take size. You can take small size. And the, and the biggest thing I tell people is you got to learn it. You can take a small account and you can build that account into a medium account. Then you can take a medium account and build it into a bigger account by learning as you go. So you start and open up a small account and then you take a little bit more and a little bit more. And if you can leave the profits in there, you can just build it up. As far as IRAs, you've got to talk to whoever is managing the IRA to determine if you can take trades in it, if you're allowed. I know you can usually go long in most IRAs or buy things. You could buy a put in the stock. If they don't allow you to short, then you buy. That is something that you have to ask your account person. That's not a question for me. Any broker questions, I would speak directly to your place and find out. You can buy puts. A put is an option where you would basically be shorting the stock, but you'd be buying the put. They may allow you to do that. I don't know. You have to ask them. Well, then you have to find out from the broker, though. You have to find out from the place that you have the account, wherever, whatever, wherever that happens to be. I don't know if you're allowed, if you're allowed to do it or not in the account. We test it. <coughs> okay. Good questions here today. Anyways, we did talk about this already. You trade on margin. We're typically looking for a dollar and something. You're chucking it out. Okay. Learning as you go. Anyways, if you want to think about doing this, whether it's for part-time or full-time job, it's definitely something that I think is going to be very lucrative in 2019 for day traders. 
Long-term investors are going to have a hard year unless they have a plan of action before January 1. And I say, I have a plan of action. If you've got money in retirement in a 401k, then sit down with your investment advisor before the beginning of the year and determine a plan of action. All right. But there are challenges that people have with trading, and a lot of them has to do with attitude, lack of focus, and really also greed. You know, it's great to have these big days sometimes, but you can't expect that it's going to be all the time. So you have to look at it as, okay, this is my goal today. And every once in a while, shoot, you get a big one. And then you say, thank you. Do, do, do. Thank you, market. And you get up and you move forward. All right. It's the same way with anything that you do. When you work for yourself, you're responsible, you're responsible for your own decisions. But I say to people, if you join the trading room with me, then you have the best chance of being successful. My trading room is not open for people to join unless they hire students of my Golden Gap course. You have to take the class, pass the class, then you join the room. The trades that are fast, you have to know what to do. I'm trying to create good traders, people that are successful and do well. And I've, I've been able to do that in the six years I've had the business. So I don't want people jumping in and jumping out. You have to decide if this is something that you want to do, if you want to do it. Anyways, my class, I teach the Golden Gap Points. It's the 26-point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist, which you will do in the pre-market. This checklist tells you what to trade, when, and what direction. The 26-point checklist predicts directional bias in a stop. And I do it every day. I never skip it. I don't skip it. I don't eyeball it. I don't trade on the fly, okay? The last class of the year is this coming weekend. So my class is called the Golden Gap Course. It's $59.99, six grand US dollars. You email me if you want to sign up. You have to sign up through by emailing me. You get the forms and you fill them out. You pay with a credit card and it comes up the stock swoosh LLC. The class is December 15th and 16th, Saturday and Sunday, nine to five. Last class of the year. Email me if you want to sign up. It's six years of had the business. Actually, anniversary is this week, so I'm doing a big happy birthday special. Good timing for those of you that are interested. You sign up by Friday, you get the year free in the trading room. Normally, the room is $3,600 after the class, but you get the year free, which would be uh, for one year. If you do the class this weekend, you just got to sign up by Friday. So think about education. I'm running short on time here, but just want to make a couple comments. When you choose to do this, you're, you're, you're investing in yourself when you take a class, whether it's my class or anybody else's. You are investing in yourself. First of all, you're paying me for my time, which is very important, and you're also paying me for my information, which is important too. But you're really investing in yourself when you choose to do this and say, I believe in myself, and I think that this is something that I really want to get serious about and do, and I'm going to do this thing in 2019. But the benefit is you will be able to get my trade calls in the room free for a year. And when you follow someone else, particularly someone that knows what they're doing and has conviction, which you, you can tell when I make the calls. In fact, I, I, I put the trading room online for YouTube. I uploaded it. You can go there, YouTube, listen to the call today and stitch fix. I gave it. It's a lot less stressful when you follow someone, okay, than doing it on your own. And for some reason, I, I don't know why, but I want to share this story. Many people would prefer to slowly be in pain, losing a little bit of money day by day and week by week in the market. I don't know why. I guess it's a slow pain, a slow bleed, rather than just paying for a chunk of money in a class. But I don't think that's a good idea. And I think people are going to have not slow pain in trading in 2019. People are going to have big pain and lose more than they think that they would normally or have in the past. And also, you also waste time. If you spend months and years trying to figure out how to trade or jumping around, even if you're not, you know, putting forward six grand for a class, if you lose six grand over a month or over a year, you're wasting time and you're still losing and you still don't know what to do. There was a man that I spoke to and I'm sharing this with everyone. I haven't talked to him at all since October. He called me to do my class, had been following me for a year, had 20 grand in his account in September, for whatever reason, decided not to do it. I guess he thought he didn't need it. He admitted to me, jumped around. Then I followed up with him in October. He said, I can't do the class, I can't afford it. I said, what do you mean you can't afford it? He said, I just lost half my account. I said, what? First of all, I could still afford it. He still had 10 grand. He lost 10 grand in one month. To this day, he's not done the class and I don't even know if he has any money left in his account at all. This is a story that many people have gone through. I'm sharing the story because I'm telling you uh, don't, don't be dumb. You, if you don't know how to trade, you're not going to make money in the market. Fact. It's just the market just doesn't pay people consistently that don't make money. It doesn't mean you'll never make money in any trade. Some trades you will, but it doesn't mean you're doing the right action. 
And the problem is when you take the wrong action and you have a positive outcome, you're training your brain then to think that that action is correct and you will take that action again. And the likelihood of then the positive outcome from a wrong action is low, not high odds. So when I take a trade or when I rate my gap in the morning, when I look through my points, it, it has to be 20 points or more. 20 points or more, if it's a 17, 18, I'm not doing it. If it's 20 points or more, I say I'm going to do this trade, has high odds. It's high odds. You look at the odds. When you're trading, you're looking at the odds. You say, okay, high odds is going to work or low odds. Low odds, you're ever going to make money in the market if you don't have proper education. Low odds. Low odds, you're ever going to make money in the market if you're not following someone that knows what they're doing unless you know what you're doing on your own. So you have to look at the odds and you have to go with it. And I'm trying to warn people of that. Some people listen to me, some people that don't. I have no idea that man will lose half his account from September to October. But if I had told him he would, I don't think he would have listened to me anyways. Okay. I don't think people should trade without education. It does not mean that every education out there is good. While it is true that not all trading education out there is good, that is absolutely true. Some trading education is not worth the money. But it is also true that not all trading education is bad. The problem is that people are never sure if they will learn enough to cover the cost of the education. They're more concerned with the output of the money. Again, they'd rather slowly bleed it in the market. They feel like they're losing by paying for education upfront in a chunk, but meanwhile, they're losing market year after year. So be smart about it. Be very, very smart is what I'm saying. And think about it because 2019 is going to be a very volatile year, more so than ever before. And if you are not prepared mentally, education wise, just in your head about what your expectations are for the coming year and of yourself, you're not going to have a good year. And I want people to do well. I want, you know, I want to like everyone to do well. But the fact is that not everyone will do well in the market. And when, when I take a trade like big, and big is just such a good example, because people were long that stock on Friday. Traders were long it, not institutions or wouldn't have fallen off a cliff, but traders were. Part of the, I took money from other people in that because I was short it and traders were long it. I took money from those people that lost. I made money, they lost. I took it from them. When you trade, it's a zero sum game. There's always a loser and there's always a winner. So you have to decide if you want to be on the side of the winner. And a smart intellectual person will understand that if you want to be successful and good and you want to make a lot of money, then you will learn how to trade properly, not do it on the fly, not jump around and you will get focused on what you're doing. Um, penny stock platforms. I do not trade and I would not trade penny stocks. They're too speculative. Uh, if you, you can do options online, you can buy puts, which is basically a short email me. I'm Melissa at the stock If you have any more questions, good webinar, everyone. Any questions from anyone else? Thank you. Oh, you there. Hey, Larry has my information up at the top. Any questions from anyone? Thank you. Thanks for having me. <clears throat> All right, Melissa, thank you so much for coming on. And, uh, you know, Melissa, it's pretty funny. I feel like, you know, I was listening to your presentation. It sounded like uh, everything you said was me, but with a woman's voice. It's so funny that, uh, you know, we, we trade very similar for everyone here to kind of, if you if you don't know Melissa and uh, <clears throat> being part of Cyber Trade University, we're in the same type of trading room how day trading has been so volatile, how, how much fun it's been, but uh, she's got a great product and, you know, listen, go, go out there and uh, definitely check her out and, uh, you know, follow her. And like I said, the, the way you learn is, you know, great traders learn, um, never stop learning. And as much as we all are learning from each other, I, I learned a lot today. And sometimes it just makes you, it ensures yourself how important education is. And, you know, just like she just finished with her last presentation there, where she was talking about people would rather lose the money in the market than actually get the right education. And not, not all education out there is good from everyone, but you're always going to learn something. And just remember, it's not for everybody. And that's okay.